So welcome back to my channel. So this is part four of my how to build an iOS app with a Django backend. So we're pretty much done on the backend side of things on Django. So just a recap, uh, we installed Django, uh, we hook it up to a Postgres SQL, and then we installed Django REST framework and we exposed some uh, APIs. Um, actually just one API for now. But that API, we're allowed to do a get, post, uh, update, and delete. And then we also use tools like Postman, uh, where we have an authenticated user uh, calling those API, and then we're able to get a response. So now time to tackle the Swift side of things. So open up Xcode and create your project. So create an, an app. I'm going to call this uh, Network App. Create a new directory, and once it's created, uh, the first thing we want to do is actually create the struct. So on Django, we created a model. Uh, we're basically gonna create the same struct. So this is also the same that you see on your payload. So this is the one that we're gonna create. So back to Xcode. Um, create a new file, create a select Swift file, and I'm gonna create this account. It's gonna be a struct account uh, implementing uh, codable and uh, hashable because we're gonna be iterating over it later. So you have name as a string, um, category as a string description as a string let uh, wealth type as a string as well and then we have balance which is actually an integer and then created uh, at which is a string so pretty much that's the structure uh, and what we need to do is uh, go to content view. So this is the main uh, view that gets loaded on Swift. So we're going to modify this. Uh, we're going to create a new function. I'm going to create, call it load account. And basically what we want to do is first um, create a URL. So card let URL and assign the URL component and from here it's gonna accept a string and this would be the endpoint for our API so if I go to Django REST framework the browsable API I could grab the endpoint so I just uh, put that in there um, and then I say else and if somehow the endpoint is down, API is down, and I'm just gonna return it, and that should be it. Uh, next is let's create that request. So if I do request, we need the URL request object, and it's gonna accept a parameter of URL. Uh, let me just quickly. So it's gonna accept a parameter of URL, and then. Uh, the request would be uh, HTTP method uh, get and it needs to be quotes, not single quotes. So I'm doing this because um, we're using some authentication. Um, I need to set some para uh, header values on my request. So to do that, I call add value and I'm going to set application JSON and this would be what I accept and then another one would be I'm going to leave it blank for now and I'm going to talk about it it would be the authorization that's actually that so authorization is your um, username password on a base64 string 
so you could do that on some tools you just uh, add your username password and then base64 it or you could open postman uh, and then on postman you have this code section here um, on my request uh, you could see that it has this header called authorization and then basic so this is what I need for my header on Xcode so this would allow authenticated callout to my API so you just put that in there and then that should be good to go uh, next is we want to build that URL session now so you call URL session a shared instance and I'm gonna call data task and at the end of um, you know this URL request we're gonna pass in the request um, and then let's put resume at the end here so this is saying after this executed resume um, and then for the contextual we're gonna say uh, data response and if there's an error and if the data is available so we're gonna assign it the value but inside the value it's checking if let response if there's a response from this API we're gonna try to decode uh, the response and say decode um, so the value that we're gonna get is an array of accounts so we say self and then say data and then finally uh, we want this operation to be asynchronous so we call dispatch queue main and this is asynchronous and self we're gonna assign the value I'm gonna call up I'm gonna set a parameter called accounts and this would be the value of response so I haven't made this yet so it would error out that's fine and then we just uh, want to do a return cool so I haven't defined this yet uh, this is so I'm gonna create a state because I want this to be tracked if it changes so I'm gonna call it accounts it's gonna be an array of account from our model and make an instance of it if I save that should remove the error so next I want to do is I want to create a H tag out of this one so I um, want to load some image so I'm gonna use some of the SF symbols uh, and then say banknote and maybe foreground green yep and then text name um, hold on um, I need to iterate to my list actually so I need to create a for each here. So for each, and I say accounts um, is my value. Um, you need some sort of an ID if you're iterating to it, um, but we already defined it as hashable, so that should be good. And then say item in, and move that last bracket over here so it doesn't error out. I'm just gonna shift this, go. Cool. And then I could now target the uh, items on my array. So if I call a name, uh, then name, I should be able to get that. And I want some spacer here instead of padding. And then text. And I'm gonna call. Um, I'm gonna have a string. So I'm gonna interpolate this with item balance and save okay so it's because I haven't called my method yet so I call on appear perform and let's call load account oh, let's put that a lowercase and if I do my build now, I should get 
a response back. So there you have it. We were able to call the API and authenticate the session, and we got a response back. So that's it for now. We'll continue again on iterating and making this look uh, prettier. So if you like this video, thumbs up. If you don't like it, thumbs down. Um, cheers. Bye for now.